tonight. All right, I'm going to call up um, our two, ama two amazing people in our midst right now. We have Mr. Wale Ailara in the building. Ola Wale Ailara. Olawale Ailara is a passionate entrepreneur with over 10 years experience starting and running businesses in the southwest of Nigeria, handling transactions worth a combined value of over $300 million. Prior to founding Landway, he worked as Head Business Development, Creativity and Strategy at Eagles Insight and Innovation and co-founded Nigerian Property Investments Group a real estate platform for Nigerians in diaspora. He's a recipient of the 2018 Forbes Africa 30 Under 30 recognition. He sits on the board of over 10 high-profile businesses and is a member of the Sponsors for Young Growing Business Association, a Pan-African organization comprising a network of leading African professionals thriving in challenging career paths. He boasts of a number of award recognition, like the most innovative real estate leader, future award business category winner, and media features with the Business Day, BBC, Forbes, amongst many others. Ladies and gentlemen, please make welcome with a resounding applause to the next conference 2022, Mr. Olawali Ailara. Now we celebrate him. And then we have Mr. E. Aboyeji. Inyolua Aboyeji. Inyolua Aboyeji is the general partner and co-founder of Future Africa, a platform that provides capital, coaching, and community for mission-driven innovators building an African future where purpose and prosperity is within everyone's reach. Prior to co-founding Future Africa, he served as the Deputy Director General for the Madame Obi Ezekwesili 2019 presidential campaign. He also helped to build Andela and Flutterwave, two of Africa's largest and fastest growing technology companies backed by global investors. In Yolua, most popularly known as E, holds a bachelor's degree in legal studies from the University of Waterloo and is a World Economic Forum Young Global Leader. He also sits on the board of a number of corporate and non-profit organizations and advises a number of national and sub-national governments across Africa on how to support high-growth innovation-driven enterprises in their domains. Next Conference 2022 With a resounding applause and a shout of joy, please make welcome Inyolua Aboyeji. Celebrate him as well. All right, um, so we're going to be having um, a panel session just talking about um, what Mrs. Ibokun has shared in terms of um, enterprise, you know, business, tech, um, in, right now in our space as we see it, as believers, right? Um, I have some questions here, I'm going to be asking them. So I have a couple of questions, okay. Now, Mrs. Ibukun has spoken about the mountain of influence and what it really means as Christians, what we really need to do, you know, in terms of um, um, having a relationship with God. It's more about God. It's not just about our agenda because kingdom business is not, we are going there for something. It's a purpose, right? Why we are there, why God has sent us there. Now, I'm going to ask this question. Um, as a Christian community, um, Mr. Wale, and as a Christian community, what will it take as believers to boost the economic power, you know, of God and the church? So where we are right now, how do we even start, you know, um, how do we come together? We have a 7,000, right? How do we even come together to build this economic um, power as believers and as Christians? Absolutely. Why, why doesn't Mr. Wally start? I feel like if I have more to say. Hey, you're putting me on the spot, but sorry, it's fine. Sorry. All right. So uh, first... I actually wanted to sit in uh, listening to Ms. Awushika and thank God I helped Cindy because she said a lot yeah. and, and I'm just going to add to everything that she has said. As, as Christians, I feel more than ever before that there's, there's no way we can build economic power 
if we are not involved in the real the real sector and the real sector what i call the real sector is politics a lot of people i don't i don't even know why we try to shy away from it if we are not involved and with the way everything is going right now just like she said uh, some few people presented candidate and we know this delegate thing and all of that and in making that decision you, start, you know she said something that, that uh, we all live in different places but imagine that we all stay within this local government and we all decide to join a party I don't know because no matter what you want to do in business no matter what you want to do in business if you don't have a strong enabling environment there is no economy without intelligent people being in the forefront of it and where we are as a country you know sitting down there i was just checking through the current gdp that we have as a country and it's extremely we we are sitting on something very delicate this time so as as no matter how we want to put it to build the real economy we have to get involved in strong decision making strong decision making because the business that you are trying to create there will be somebody there that will determine how far your business will go how far your business will jump how far your business everything because somebody can wake up and say, uh, I mean, there's no more, uh, you cannot, you, you, you can only have access to a thousand dollars. And you run a business that every, every month you need about $300,000 to keep your business active. And they're telling you that you, you can only have access to a thousand dollars. How do you comprehend all of that? So we, we, as, as, as Christians, I feel that we strongly have to get involved in, I mean, that is not to say that we are just going to fix it by just getting involved, but it's a starting point. And that's my belief, strongly. Okay, I have a follow-up question. So how can the church begin to help her members to get involved? What do we need to start doing? How do we need to position ourselves in this different phase of influence? Okay, um, thank you very much, first of all, for having me here. And I think those were amazing comments, Wale. My, my own point of view, um, to combine the previous question and what you just said, is that one of the biggest challenges we have in the body is, in my mind, um, a dearth of discipleship. Mm. And what do I mean by that? Um, Many times when we try to build this sort of strong economic presence, as we say, what we often find is that the expressions of our faith that we are least proud of are what exemplify the body. So when you talk about a Christian businessman, what picture comes to your mind? I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say. You're not, in fact, some people would even boldly say, oh, if somebody addresses themselves as a pastor in a business transaction, I have reason to be even more suspicious. Even Christians will say that. And they have reason to say that. And for me, I think that's the first thing to address. We have to address, are we becoming like Christ? Are we before we even talk about what it takes to build the impact. Um, so that's, that's the first one. Thank you very much, Auntie. <laughs> but but this, the, second, the second element of it, which I think is the most important element of it, is understanding that our business is ministry. Right? Um, the, our faith is at the center of our lives and every, in every way even in the business that we do we are supposed to be for Christ so what does that mean? it means we cannot build businesses for profits 
It doesn't mean we will not make profits, mm. but we cannot build businesses just because we want to make mm. profits. Mm. God must be the purpose of our business. How are we serving people in our businesses? What kind of sacrifices are we making? Do you understand? For us to be able to ensure that for whatever reason we set up our business, if we say, okay, we are selling rice, are we selling the highest quality rice at the cheapest price? If we say we are doing PR, are we helping people cover up lies? If we say we are doing whatever it is that we are doing, is God at the center of why that business exists? Even if it means you are not making as much money. These are the fundamental issues that we must do. It because it is only our lives that will become the light that will draw all men to himself. It's not me that is saying his Bible. You understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So, if we start anywhere other than our lives and how in our lives we can be like Christ and we can be for Christ, it will end up crashing down. Some people want to start with politics. That's a good place to start. But politics is the pursuit of power. It's not the pursuit of God. Now, does that mean that we don't participate in politics? No. We need to participate in politics. But what are we going there to do? And are we prepared to be light in that politics? I'm sure all the delegates, half of them will be Christians, half of them will be Muslims. Yet, we saw the outcomes that we saw. So is it enough to just participate? Mm. No. Mm. Wow. Well, I have a follow-up question. You know, and you're both business people and have people working for you. What would you say, you're talking about Christian values and how Christians in the marketplace don't even act like they're Christians. What would you say are the values that Christians don't even portray in the marketplace? You have people that work with you that are Christians. What kind of values should we start looking out for? Or should we start emulating and imbibing as Christians in the marketplace? You want to do it? <laughs> All right. So I feel that if you... As Christians, I mean, I have a, I, I'm, I don't look at people's feet when I want to employ them mm. because it's not, it's like the policy thing. And the fact that you're a Christian doesn't mean that, okay, your skill is, the place of skill is different from the place of your faith. Mm. But what your faith allows you to do in the workplace is that it is, you know, there's something about what we call the workplace culture. And also, there is also the Christian value. Now, to me, because if you, and, and I guess that a lot of people try to, we try to miss this point. It, 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 I mean, a lot of times, if you, if you are a Christian, you don't need to sell, see, when you buy a car, it comes with the full, it, it comes with the full package, right? And you, you don't, I expect that you represent something within the workplace. In as much as I'm not looking to say, okay, you have to, every break time you must pray, every now and then you must, you must take time out for fellowship and all of that. No, that's not what I'm looking for. But if you are a Christian, there are, there are, there are, there are, there are certain elements, the, the, that element of trust first that I can I can trust you beyond your skill I can I know that you when you are faced with it with with an important decision you will make the right decision because first coming to work with us you are in the center of God's plan and whatever decision that you make you are going to make the right decision irrespective without compromise When you now, within the workplace, when you now find people who, I'm a Christian and this is what I do, I mean, I mean, even I'm a pastor, and they come into the workplace, probably there's a, okay, let me give an example. Probably there's a deal. You handle procurement. And you don't collect bribe. You don't collect bribe. But when they... When they supply, 
they can they can they can appreciate you. <laughs> Soft drinks. Uh, they can appreciate you. <laughs> so, how do you respond to that? So, when you find a Christian tell you, well, I didn't ask for it, but I collected it. That's the point I the guess we should be asking. The favor of God. The favor of God. <laughs> and, you know, and there's testimony around it. <laughs> So, but I believe that mm. as a Christian, your, your values mm. are, is more refined. Mm. And also, you find people that are not even Christians. And they have this natural value that mm. I won't do this, mm. I won't do this, I won't do this. And it makes them look as if they have the true Christians mm. and the Christians mm. are they are the yes just goes down to like, discipleship yeah let, let me let me add some perspective I think the first thing is oftentimes we don't really ask ourselves what does it mean to be a Christian um, to be a Christian is to be Christ like mm. and being Christ like requires that you exhibit certain things not imperfection all the time, right? But that you make that effort to continue to get to that point. And, you know, one of my favorite verses in the Bible is that by their fruits, you shall know them. So whenever I look at someone, it's not by what you call yourself. It's not even by what you do. It's by your fruits. So when we say what are the Christian values we want people to inscribe, I mean, front and center in my mind, is a life of service is a life of service because when again for us as christians the priority is the kingdom of god right the bible says seek ye first the kingdom and its righteousness and everything else shall be added unto you so the first priority is the kingdom but when jesus describes the kingdom of god he describes the kingdom of God as one who has been called to serve. It's not, it's not a, a job where somebody just sits down and is commanding everybody. It's, it's living a life of service. How does that translate into our business context? How do we treat our customers? Do we feel their pain? When they are asking us for a service and it fails, as it sometimes can. Are we willing to go to any length, including removing profits, so that we can make things right? That is when I know I am dealing with a Christian business. When I'm not worried about whether or not I will get what I have paid for. Even at that very basic level, it's exhibiting the fruits of the Spirit. Exhibiting the right fruits that one can call a Christian business. The thing is, if there is anything in this world that is more important to us than serving others. Especially for those of us that are in business. Because at the end of the day, there is, there is such a thing as a faith-driven business. I consider myself a faith-driven entrepreneur and investor. There's nothing, yes, I agree with you, it's not like only Christians work in my firm, but every decision I make is biblical. If it's not biblical, I won't do it. Even up to 10% of my company goes somewhere. So, what I'm trying to say is, for us as Christians, the question we now have to ask ourselves is, what are our fruits? If people are investing in businesses where somebody is a Christian, a Christian is at the helm, and they are getting scammed, we have to be asking ourselves those hard questions. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Okay. If, if somebody, if there's a service, if there's a service that is owned by a Christian and I'm not getting the right level of service, we have to be asking ourselves that question. And we have to also support each other on our journey there because, again, as you know, all of us have our Adamic nature in us. So our tendency is to say, ah, if I give this person 
maybe I messed up the service and I now say, okay, please don't pay or I'll return your money to you. Will people take advantage of me? There's a tendency to think that way. But it's only in, in fellowship as business people mm. that we will then recognize, okay, in this case, you are just being foolish. In this case, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. This is how to make things right. Back in the day, we used to have full gospel businessmen. I don't know if they are today. These days now, you know, one day I went to one of the meetings and one of them approached me to invest in a gambling business. But I'm just saying that, I'm not saying it's bad, maybe it's, it's okay to, to invest in a gambling business. I just don't consider it to be something that is part of my faith. You understand what I'm trying to say? Okay. So my, my business will not invest. But I'm just saying, how are our Christian values guiding the fruits of how we do business day to day? Very important. So tying to what you just said now, which I really love, I know a lot of people here, and I want everyone here, if you're here, please listen with rapt attention, because I believe that answers are coming to questions, deep-seated questions in the hearts of people, right? A lot of people here are doing businesses or in careers, and they're trying to tie it to God. So I'm a banker, for example, or I'm a fashion designer, or I'm a hairdresser. How does it connect back to God. How am I, how, am, how is the kingdom agenda? I'm making somebody's hair, you know, I'm, I'm sewing clothes, you know, so from your experience and in your businesses, you know, how do you tie it back to God? How do people see the sole purpose and the, the, the vision and the agenda of kingdom in what they are doing? Uh, let me, let me, let me take this because this is something that I've had to grapple with my whole career. The, the thing is every single person, you know, the Bible says before I formed you, before you were conceived, mm. you understand, I formed you, I've determined what you're going to be. So he has deposited something into each and every one of us, a talent, an instrument of service, something that he wants us to show the world. Sometimes the struggle is in focusing on what you're doing as opposed to what God wants you to do, mm. right? You might be a banker. Banking is just a skill set. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? Anybody can be a banker. But what, when you, in your conversation, in your walk with God, are you asking God, what does he want you to do in banking? Uh, maybe you uh, are sewing people's, maybe you are uh, making people's hair. Uh, are you asking God, what is, he ask, what is he asking you to do for your customers? Uh, maybe, you know, your customer, um, is facing a life challenge and in the process of making their hair God actually wants you to witness to them, right? I'm not saying that you should use everybody you have to listen perceptively to the Holy Spirit but you need to ask yourself what do I represent as light and salt in this particular situation my, my business is a very simple business you know, I started out as an entrepreneur um, I still am but every time I spoke to God about what, okay, what do you want me to do here? You know, the message was always crystal clear. With Andela, it was like, this young people, I need you to work with me to show the world what they are capable of doing. Mm. And the way he took that business, Andela, to heights that we had never seen, attracted, you know, um, capital from all over the world to the business and established what we are now enjoying today, created a new mode of revenue. When you partner with God very deeply, it doesn't actually matter the particular skill it is that you are carrying. It's just, it's just a, a, an instrument. Yeah. It doesn't even matter. But it's, are you partnering with God? When we did Flutter Wave, it was very, very clear. Many, many, many things that needed to be done for the industry to be what it is today. And doing it in a banking industry that, quite frankly, is extremely treacherous and corrupt, yeah. right? In very dangerous circumstances. But you make sure that you do the work. You partner with God. So it's not about tying um, what the profession is or your business is. Yeah. It's asking yourself that question in a place of prayer. God, how can I, what do you want me to do? What would you have me do? in this particular circumstance. How do you want me to show up mm. in my workplace as salt and light? And that, and that, and that is really what, what will get us to where we need to go. Wow. Can we just put our hands together for that answer? Okay. 
All right. So I'm trying to wrap my head around all your discussions and all of that. And but I know that I'm on this panel, and panelists don't get to ask questions. <laughs> we can break those rules. But quite frankly, and and I'm very careful because of the Please platform. Be free. That I'm, <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I'm very careful. I'm very. I mean, my thinking is quite different in all of these things. Now, if if a brother comes to meet you and tell you that. I just got a job in Nigerian bills. Are you going to tell that brother not to take the job? So I believe that wherever we find ourselves is not, I mean, Daniel who works with strong. Have you asked yourself that when Shadrach and the, the and the, the two other guys. Meshach and Abednego. Yeah, Meshach. What, what was Daniel doing? Like, looking at them boys and be like, boys, I mean. But because it's not about the, it's about us individually representing, and I don't want us to look at it as if we are we are like those things are dark those sectors are not dark it is see the manifestation of god my own belief and the manifestation of the devil you can express both through humans yeah. if you want to see how terrible the devil is yeah. is one human being you will encounter yeah. and you just look at the person and say you there's a demon in you and if you really want to see how how amazing mm, God is, good. my daughter will look at me and see God. Because of the connection that we have. See, my full understanding of God started when I had my first child. Mm. I've been born again since 2005. But my full understanding of God as my father started when I become a father, you know, when I became a father, that is looking at my child and knowing how much the kind of things I can I can do for my child. So I don't want us to see those places as a, the people. It is the people that makes it dark. Mm. God didn't create anything. See, number one is that devil has no idea. He's not yeah. creative. Yeah. He's not innovative. Yeah. Is nothing like that. Devil has nothing. All the inventions that we are seeing in the world is not the devil. God has a plan for this world. Mm. If he has no plan, every one of us will be in heaven by now. So he has a plan and is interested in this world in the first place. You know, there's a, see, there's a particular set of people that believe that when it was the rise of social media and all this, mm. they believe they say, ah, it's, it's the devil's agenda. Right now is the biggest tool yeah. for the kingdom of God globally. Now, another person will take the same tool. Don't forget, on this same platform, they can, put a, they can put pornography. And on this same platform, you can listen to the word of God that will transform your life and you excel. So what I feel that, what I think we carry as Christians is that first, our life must represent God irrespective of the platform. Yeah. See, I work in a very sensitive industry. In your industry, I, maybe I know a little bit about your industry, but I don't think that your industry, maybe not a lot of spiritual powers. <laughs> <laughs> my, industry has, <laughs> my industry has mm. spiritual powers. Two weeks ago, guess Please what? Share, yeah. Two weeks ago, mm, two weeks ago, and my PA, I mean, my E is here, and two weeks ago, they sent me a video from one of my sites. Mm. The security guys, they sent me a video of some whites. No, they are not white, so they, they were wearing They're white mm. and putting on these, you know, blankets or whatever it is. I, I don't know. 
whatever it is. There were six in numbers because they had no title to the property. Mm. I don't governor's consent, see of and everything. But some indigenous mm. just believe that because it's their, it's their land. And they, they, they were six in numbers, went and then bury one calabash mm. inside the ground. The first thing you do as a Christian is, let's carry the anointing oil. Let's go. Let's go. Or you fast. I don't fast and pray on those things. Mm. <laughs> because first, mm. my belief, if it's, if it's all these babalawus and co, I don't even bother. You know, they are rams. In spiritual wickedness, I please, those ones are wicked. You can have fasting. Mm. <laughs> but these ones are just, and they sent me that video, and they sent the video to, to the head of legal. Mm. So he sent me that video, he said, ah, sir, what do we do? Ah, they say, ah, they sent me this video. Guess what? I told my driver that we are going to that place, and I'm going to uproot the whole thing. Come on now. And then, my driver said, ah, no. even my driver, if my driver, <laughs> hey. the guy went there, or mm. put the whole thing, pour petrol, burn it up. I didn't even lose a sleep. Wow. wow. I operate in an industry where if somebody shakes you and you are not standing well, mm. you will appear hey. where you don't like. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so hey. how? Do Places that we are turning to cities now, they were once village. Mm. This there was a, there's a particular site mm. that we have that people are living there now. Everybody, they sent me a video, uh, no, a picture when we're trying to, mm. you know, they said that place used to be a shrine. Mm. So shrine. <laughs> when I go on that estate now and I see kids with their bicycles and all that, and I, I used to tease my team. I said, this used to be a shrine. That means they were worshipping some whatever it is. Mm. But I'm sure that my five years plus mm. in the industry right now, they know what we work. Mm. Not because they've not tried. Mm. They must have tried. Mm. And even I see people, when we go to meetings, they say, ha, we respect you. Some of them, when would they say we respect you? It's not because mm. of your size mm. or because mm. of the... They have encountered you somewhere mm. else. So it's not because the industry is dark. The industry is not dark. People made it so. Mm. So as Christians, it is by what we do, our nature, the mm. way we, the way we transform mm. everything. They will respect us more rather than focusing on too much act, too much this thing without action. Mm. You said by their fruits. Yes. So baby, the person that said we respect you. Maybe I'm just sleeping in my house and then they've called me like three times and I didn't appear. <laughs> and I hey. for this guy not to appear. Yeah. See, people have said so many things though, about me. Mm. They said, ah, first it was different things. Ah, that guy must belong to one. See, because we must get them to that stage where they are confused. Yes, yes, yes. They are confused. Ah, you must belong to. My point is. As Christians, we must get ourselves to that point when we begin to shake about all these things and all this, and within the work environment, mm. it, it, it sends a signal that we are even worried. Then it's like we are doubting our God to say, God will stand with that and say, Leave him, leave him alone. You'll never leave him alone. That's not the God I serve. <laughs> hey. The God I serve will not even, number one, he will cross leg. That's it in heaven. Yes. Mm. So, it is with that understanding that, that within your workplace, you move and you become a mystery. Mm. And mm. people respect you and easily you can, you can sit them down and they want to listen. Mm. You can become authority within that field. Mm. So it's by our, mm. you know, that display of power that makes mm. them respect us and give us seats at the table. Wow. Because that's the way it works. Wow. Wow. Let me put our hands together. I hope you are learning. Discipleship, when we get there, power past power. It's the power that you've accumulated in the, in the secret place. Amen. It's not just mere words, though. 
All right. Um, just to wrap up, we have five more minutes. Um, we are talking, saying something about um, technology and the new in, um, inventions that's happening. You know, from your perspective, where you're sitting, what um, technology, what inventions you, would you say um, Christians and believers should take advantage of, and how would it begin to shape the church in the next five, in the, in the next ten years? <laughs> um, well, m one thing I've always believed is that technology is a democratizing force. So when you think about our society, you know, I like to say, if you, if you, if you lived in Nigeria, maybe when I was growing up, maybe in the 90s, right? There were maybe um, 2,000 people who could have an opinion on where Nigeria was going, what Nigeria was doing, how Nigeria should work, and so on, right? Now, maybe it's about 2 million people. But there are many other people who are still disenfranchised. For me, I think that what technology is doing is consistently democratizing access to the most important things for everybody. So whether it's giving people the ability to make payments and receive payments from people all over the world, giving people the ability to work in the global economy, giving people the ability to, um, to, to, to um, sell things from Nigeria all over the world, giving people the ability to um, engage in different um, uh, market activities or trades across multiple different markets around the world. So all these things, technology is democratizing access to the global economy. So when the, the first thing I would say for Christians in particular, um, and, and by Christians, I don't mean those who call themselves Christians. I mean people who are actually trying to be like Christ. One big gap that I see is even though people think that there is a lot of people who have technology skills, there's still a need for even more. Um, and it's actually very, very critical for Christians to be in that industry because I liked what Wally said. Actually, it's not really that the industry is dark, but sometimes if an industry is overshadowed by dark people, it will now begin to take that coloration. I mean, this is how politics became evil. You understand? And it became unpopular for people. Because what happened in politics, politics is just bringing your community together and getting them to make decisions in their own best interest, leading them to make decisions in their own best interest. But when dark forces started to enter our politics, it became what it is today. Um, in, my, in my own industry, in the technology industry, there are a lot there's a big rush of new talent going into that industry but we have a lot of challenges when it comes to finding talent that is willing to work hard we find talent that is willing to play um play fair and play smart finding talent that is willing to um that, that is willing to grow they have a growth mindset right they're trying to get better um, we have challenges um, finding people who have integrity. Mm. There are so many people that do small, small things to compromise themselves. Mm. You understand? And I personally believe that one of the big moves of God, particularly because of the emancipation that the technology industry represents, is that more Christians, true Christians, need to go into the technology industry at all levels. Managerial, um, engineering, customer service, products, people that know they are God, right? Mm. And can do exploits mm. in those spaces. Because mm. I think, you know, if you're looking at the state of this country, the reality is that there is very little that is left that is viable for us to bank our future on, mm. apart from technology, right? If you look at what's going on in oil and gas, it's going to take many years, even if we start to get it right, the world has started to lower their mm. desires of, of hydrocarbons, right? And again, when we say technology, we're not just talking about software. Even manufacturing is technology as well. We have to be a country that makes things. Mm. This is an area where there's so much innovation going on. You know, now I was in a plant the other day. People are making car parts in Nigeria mm. for cars that are very scarce. So imagine maybe you have a, one very rare 
you know, BMW or something, and maybe there's a small part that it needs. People are actually 3D printing those parts here in Nigeria. We need to start getting smarter around those types of industrial mm -hmm. innovation. Mm -hmm. So again, I think what it, it, start, it begins with is more people looking to get more mm -hmm. technology skills. And there are many opportunities mm -hmm. to do that. Thank God for the internet, YouTube, and so on. So I think that is the biggest opportunity I would ask um, that Christians really look at. Find, get a technology related skill. Mm -hmm. It can be anything. Um, whether it's writing online or, or so on and so forth, and then continue to progress in your career from there. Uh, all right, just to wrap up the conversation, uh, I, I'm going to give them one last time to just say something to us um, as Christians in the marketplace and building um, a kingdom business for God, perpetuating God's agenda. What would you tell us based on your experience? I'm going to give just one last, you know, one last time. What should we begin to do? What can we do better? And how can we take over this kingdom for God? All right, so very quickly, there's been something that I've been thinking about lately. I mean, not, I mean, for some time now, maybe in the last two years, is that we have enough power already. Uh. We don't, I don't think we need more power. Uh. The one we've charged ourselves with, let's go and use it uh. small. Uh. 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 Let's just go and use it. I'm choosing my words, all right? Is the power that we have. See, I would, I would respect people only by their results. Uh. I've lived my life like this or This is the way I've lived my life. I only respect people with results. So if we call ourselves Christians, young, vibrant, ready for God, when you jump in church on Sunday and you pray and you fill yourself up, when you get to work on Monday, don't be lazy. Uh, uh. Let me see you in church dancing. See, I have over 400 people in my employment. My salary bill every month is close to 100 million. So I know what I'm saying. If when you do all you need to do on Sunday, when you get to work, show me power. Mm. Let me say, ah, everybody, we need to be going to Timilene's uh, church. If that is the way it is, because we've we've lived with all this, I, this thing, and I feel that we have. Christians in politics, so we have Christians in tech, we have Christians in all these places. We have to go beyond the place of theory to practical. When you quote the scripture, quote it, quote it, quote it, quote it. When you get to the workplace, get there and do. Let people want to be see. This is where the this is where this is the new evangelism. There is nobody that don't. Everybody has heard about Jesus, at least in Nigeria. <laughs> so, to honest, some nature of that. Well, <laughs> in Lagos, <laughs> you cannot be in Lagos <laughs> and say you've not heard of Jesus. <laughs> it's impossible. Either you've seen it on a billboard, you will have seen it somewhere. Not with the amount of conventions that we have every year there's no how somebody has told you about jesus it's time that because you know why we we lose a lot of people when they come in mm. I'm not going and, yeah. uh, you know that kind of thing we have to as christians get out and show ourselves a workman mm. abby Mm. Can you complete it? Producing, <laughs> producing fruit in every good work. Huh? Producing every fruit in every good work. Yeah. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Because this is very important. See, I, 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 we have to display results. There is no, mm. there is no negotiation. Mm. 
get involved in whatever sector that you need to get involved in. And when you walk in, let people see God. See, my, I know that time is up, but I will quickly say what I want to say. My board, my management, they respect me because I'm, I know that I'm a man of strategy, I'm a man of ideas, but they respect me because when I tell them that this is what God wants us to do part time, I have proven it. Uh. They know that it's beyond logic, it's beyond ideas. I've taken a lot of steps. I've gone, I mean, I've gone in different directions that everybody by everybody's understanding on that table said, no, this is not, this cannot be possible. I said, this is what God would have us do. And we, and then we move and take that decision and it turns out to be very, I mean, a very good one. What do you think they will say the next time I say, this is what God wants us to, well, okay. want us to do? They will say, yes, yes, I'm picking it in the spirit. <laughs> That's what they will say. See, during COVID, I was in Shah and, and I was just asking God that what, what is it again? What big thing can we get involved in? What big? And God said, go to Ekbe, gave us the description of that land. 159 hectares. I mean, it was very specific. See, let's not joke with this thing. Mm. Very specific. Mm. Must be by the express. Face, back in the Lekki Lagoon, do this. I gave every realtor I know that beef. They said nothing. As a matter of fact, the legal department, they were already saying, sir, I don't think there's anything in that category. Let's, if you, if, if, I mean, if you're sure that this is what God wants us to do, can we change a bit? I said, no, this is, this is, this is clear. And guess what? I was, everybody had tried, and I prayed about it. I said, well, God, this is what you want us to do. And I was coming from my house, I was on a jab bridge, and, and, and then somebody said, call this person. And I called that agent, I'm looking for this, I'm looking for this. He said, okay, I'll get back to you. He got back to me in the evening when he sent me the property details. It was exactly, ex exactly, exactly. And they made that decision to, <laughs> these things are very clear. And when, it, when we got on the table to pricing, I said, this is the amount. He said, ah, this is not possible. How can you do this with that? This is not possible. Guess what? It was our biggest revenue in 2021. Biggest revenue in 2021. Wow. Wow. So when we, when we have this power, we have these things, you pick a better signal than every other person. Because even in your city, if anywhere God can appear to you, and I'm not saying that God will wear white and say, my son, my son. That's not the way it works. A still small voice. And then just click and then you're so sure mm. because as christians at every point in time we must be in center of boss plan yeah. irrespective even see the your your biggest fear should be that when you are tempted and you are going in the other direction which it will happen you'll be tempted your biggest fear should be that you don't want to miss the center of boss plan and then you find and then you have to knock yourself back to the center because you know that in that center of God's plan, there is power, there is ideas, there is the right direction, there is what to do. And as long as you are sure about what to do, trust me, it might look foolish, but that's how you display power. Because God would always use the foolish things of this world to do what? Confound the wise. Yeah. All right. Um, I, think, I think for me, very, very, very briefly, the most important thing um, that we can do to establish God's kingdom is to live like Christ and to live for Christ. The work begins with our lives. It doesn't start with our business. It doesn't start with the government. It doesn't start with, you know, um, what other people are doing, uh, those who are against us. Um, it starts with our lives. And the work that God is calling our generation to do is to start there. How are we going to live like Christ? How are we going to live for Christ? And then work our way from there to, again, like Wally said, the fruits. Right? By their fruits, you shall know them. Not because they came to church or they said they are Christians or they, 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 are, they are looking very nice on Sunday. By their fruits, you shall know them. And 
if we walk into um, our workplaces, our businesses, understanding that our work as Christians for establishing the kingdom is to work on our lives and to ask God for help to work on our lives and to seek God's guidance about how he wants us to be salt and light to our generation. We will go way, way, way further than just talking about how we must be change our generation, change our generation, change our generation. So that's, that's. Can I put your hands together for them? Thank you very much, sirs. Thank you so much. Thank you.